All right, let's try to see if we can beat Pokemon Brick Bronze with one of Ash's best rival, Paul's team. Before we start, this video was inspired from Black yes, Star, sir. so shout outs yes, to him. Sir. All right, so Paul has a heck ton of Pokemons, so we have to choose six out of the bunch. We won't be including Gyarados, Garchomp, or Metagross since they were introduced in Journeys, and I'm only using his Pokemons from Sinnoh. Plus, it'll make this run a little too easy. Now, for sure, we have to choose Torterra, Electivire, and Drapion. These three were Paul's strongest Pokemon, and they were his aces. Then we have to add Honchkrow, since we need a Flyer. Now we need a Surfer, so I'll add Gastrodon. And then finish off with Magmortar, just to balance the team out. The rest are just too weak, or they are a pain to get, so I just left them out. Also, this isn't my first time playing Break Bronze, and I have a main account that already beat the entire game. Alright, so now let's get into the video. Against our rival, this dude just sent out a Eevee, and we just pretty much tackled him to death. It was pretty easy. He was just spamming tail whips and I took a play that game so I was just spamming tackles. But for some odd reason this Eevee was like oddly tanky for some reason. The next battle against this break girl I surprisingly lost because this patch him just did like a, a heck ton of damage for some reason. And so like I had to just reset the game. <laughs> but then on my next attempt this patch him finally stopped hitting 5 arm thrusts in a row. So I was able to win and get my drip back. Alright so now I'm against the first gym leader. And again from my experiences this dude was pretty easy. But then if you have a water type starter, you can find some trouble from this. His Pikachu is fast as hell, you probably won't be able to outspeed him, and Charge Beam just does a heck of damage. So yeah, let me tell you this, if you don't have a starter that can beat this gym easily, you might just need some Paralysis Heals and some Potions, cause it gets kinda annoying. And before we head to the second city, I went to the old graveyard to catch myself a Murkrow from my second team member. And tell me why this dude was actually pretty damn hard to catch. Like bro would just not stay inside the ball. Like before I caught this Murkrow, there was another one that I encountered and I used all my Pokeballs on it. So I had to go back to get some more Pokeballs. And then Jake decided to pull up behind us to battle us again. And I don't know why he keeps trying, but his team is hella sorry. Like his team is pretty balanced, but, but he just got some of the worst Pokemons. But then I guess his Nidoran could be a little troublesome because of the uh, ability poison point but then like as long as you don't touch him then you're fine and then his Eevee and his Blitzel really does not do anything they are quite literally useless until they evolve so yeah my grotto just sweeped his whole team and then I headed into Mount Ignis to stop Team Eclipse and to also catch my third team member Magby and this dude was so hard to find it took me like a cool 20 minutes to just find one not just that but he was also hella hard to just catch against this Eclipse admin I mean his team was pretty easy for me to beat cause, because my Grotto counters all of them. Except for this Volibee. This Volibee is pretty freaking tanky and I was kind of scared for it. But then it did not use any flying moves so I was chilling. And then I literally just O-code this Lunatoon with one Razor Leaf. So heading on to the second gym, I already knew straight out that I would not beat this dude. So I went ahead and trained my Grotto until he evolved into a Torterra so I could get Earthquake. I switched out my Torterra for my Murkrow when he sent out with his Growlithe so that I wouldn't get intimidated. Just so that I can for sure guarantee to Oko this Magmar with Earthquake. I was pretty scared because this dude has Overheat on both of his Pokemon, his Growlithe and his Magmar. For a second gym, that's a very strong move. To be completely honest, I think this gym is probably one of the harder gyms in the whole game. The next major battle is against this Eclipse Admin from uh, Rose Cove. He sends out a Steezo and I don't know what I was trying to do but I used Bite on him. This dude could have used like anything but he used Home Claws and then I finally used Earthquake to kill it. I do not know why he didn't use any Ice move. Now he sends out an Arbok and again Earthquake just kills it, easy. And now this is where I made the dumbest choice. And now he has a Soul Rock. Of course I wanted to switch out so that I could get some XP for my Murkrow. I was getting greedy on XP so I, I tested my luck. But then I kind of sold this one because he has Rock Slide and he literally just killed me. So yeah, now I set up my Magmar just to finish it off. And after some long monologue and Jake little freaky ass trying to get some cheeks, I finally headed to the third gym. I already knew that this gym was going to be hella easy because I have a grass type. This is one of the uh, advantages of having a grass type on your team or an electric type because the water gym, I also consider this one of the hardest gyms because of how tanky these water types are and, and his Gorbis having psychic. So yeah, good thing this dude has some trash ass Pokemon. For his last Pokemon, he sends out a Huntail and it really did not do anything at all. It did use Scald and Burn Me though. Regardless, this gym was easy work and I just swept this gym with my Torterra alone. Before I headed out to the next city, I went ahead and traded myself a Scorpy because you could not get one until super late to the game, like already after the last gym. So yeah, I just went ahead and caught me one. It was only level 37, so it was around the right time as well. And then Tess instigated Jake into fighting me again because she told him if he beat me, she would give him some. And so he took up on that challenge. Like bro really got instigated. What a simp. This battle wasn't really that interesting. Jake and his sorry ass team just got swept by me. Like I think this dude really needs to go back onto the drawing board to figure out his team because again, Terrible team. Balanced but terrible. 
And then Tesla will lay Maddie decided that she wanted to battle me as well. She wanted all the smoke. And I guess she found the right person because these hands are rated E. Her team was also pretty easy for me to beat, but then at least it was a lot better than Jake's team. She has a whole team of just all dragons. I can't lie though, that Shogun was pretty tanky. Anyways, she was light work. I then went into the scary ass mansion to get the Death Stone to evolve my Smurkrow into a Hunchcrow. For the 4th gem, I already knew this dude was going to start off with a Star Raptor, so I went off with the Magmar so that he doesn't lower my attack with Intimidate. I also did some training and got Flamethrower, so my Flamethrower just did a lot of damage. And luckily he did not use Close Combat because I knew that if I took one, it would have done a lot of damage. He sent out a Skarmory and also my Flamethrower just one shot it. He was lucky he has 30, so he was able to live to get one attack off and it was Spikes. I wanted some XP, so he sent out an Aerodactyl and I sent out my Hunchcrow. I used Foul Play and did half of his health. But then I did not know that he had Thunderfang, which did a lot of damage, but it did not kill me. And so I finished him up with one more foul play. He sends out another Star Raptor, and I sent out my Gastrodon to be a sacrificial lamb, just so I could heal my Pokemons again. This last Pokemon was a Breviary, and just to disrespect him, I sent out my Honchkrow again just to do two foul plays and kill him and beat the gym. After like 30 minutes of searching, I found an Elekid and I caught him as the fifth member of our team. I immediately gave him some Zaza so that he can evolve to Electabuzz. And then I went straight ahead to the Anthean Park to get him the Electrorizer, which is needed to evolve him. And then I noticed that we do not have a Pokemon that can Mega Evolve. And so I also traded myself an Aeron and replaced it for my Gastrodon since Agra can also learn Surf and we only really need Gastrodon for Surfing. So yeah, I traded it because you cannot get an Aeron into pre late to the game as well. And then I also traded myself a Magma Riser so that I could evolve my Magmar into a Magmortar. And this is pretty much our final team. And the Electrifier that I got was also actually hella crazy. I got a 4x31 on all of the right IVs. The next major battle is against Professor Cypress. And this dude is actually like hella stupid easy. Because all of his Pokemons are starters. So as long as you have fire, water, grass, and electric type, you should be like completely fine. I got a free Mega Absa, so I decided to use it because it was the only Mega that I had. Because at this point, my Mega Pokemon has not evolved yet, and I was way too broke to even get one in the first place. And then he sends out a Blaziken, which got me kind of stressed because I did not have a Water type. I traded my Gastrodon for that little Aaron, and then this Blaziken just one shot in my Mega Absa. And so I sent out a Drapion, and this is where all the fun begins. If you didn't know, Phil Stinger is a move that if you knock out Pokemon with it, you get a 3x boost to your attack. He sends out a Torterra, and then I use Nice Slash to put it below half. And then finish him off with a fell stinger, which now puts me at plus six attack. So now that I'm plus six, I just literally one shot his whole team with my Drapion alone. And that is why Paul's Drapion was so broken against Ash's team. This last mom was a Dill Fox, and so I had to teach him to stop touching kids. <laughs> and then we fought this terrorist who thinks he is Zemo from the Avengers. Bro's really trying to blow up the whole entire city. His whole team were Pokemons that had self destruct and explosion. But I guess he did not know that my Torterra was a part of the bomb squad and I was able to defeat him without difficulties. And then now the 5th gym. The 5th gym is a ground type so my Torterra was able to take care of like more than half of his Pokemons. He did have his Steel Licks but my Magmortar was able to take care of it and of course he has 30. None of his Pokemons really posed a threat to my team but his last Pokemon which is a Mega Garchomp. I sent out my Honchkrow cause I thought that I could kill with like Foul Play because if you guys didn't know Foul Play does more damage the higher the opponent's attack is. But I guess I did. <laughs> But I guess his attack is not too high up because I didn't kill him. I set up my Torterra. My Torterra got like damn near one shot. So I went back to my Aggron, Mega Evolved him, and then used Double Edge. But I was super surprised how much damage a Fire Fang from this dude did. Even then, I defeated the gym. The sixth gym is a Grass type gym. This is the first time that I actually found this much trouble against this gym. Because usually I have a Fire type that can just sweep the whole like gym by itself. But I do not know what went wrong this time. Maybe because Levani got a uh, sticky webs up. Or maybe I got too uh, greedy on trying to set up my Phil Stinger on this Drapion. And yeah, I got slept by this Breloom. I switched that to Honchkrow. This dude hit me with one Drain Punch. Wait, no, never mind. I was tripping. He hit me with one Rock Tomb and did a heck ton of damage. But luckily enough, I was able to knock out this Breloom with one Wing Attack because he's X4 to uh, Flying Types. He sends out Rose Raid. I used Haze because I thought it was Defog and I was trying to clear out the sticky webs. I was done for that. His next Pokemon was a Tangrowth and I knew that if I want any chances of to one shot this Tangrowth, I would have to bring out my Magmortar. And so yeah, I was fortunately able to one shot it with Flamethrower with Sunny Day Boost. His final Pokemon was a Mega Venusaur and I totally forgot that this thing has Earthquake. So he one shotted my Magmortar. I sent out a Honchkrow and he one shotted my Honchkrow. I set up my Aggron, I used Double Edge and I did zero damage to him. He's a Solar Beam and did more than half of my HP for some odd reason. 
So I had to send out my Torterra, used Earthquake, which left him at 1 HP. He knocks out my Torterra, and then my Electivire came in to finish the job. And then it turns out that Jake has joined Team Eclipse and Tess's reaction. And this got me so mad because Tess reacted like she did not just force Jake to fight me and embarrassed him, which prompted him to join Team Eclipse. Anyways, Jake sent out his Zepstrika and literally did nothing. I one shot him with my Earthquake. And as if he did not learn from the last time, he sent out his Needle King and I also one shot that with Earthquake. He did send out a Slowbro and to just, you know, not disrespect him, I sent out my Elective Vire because I did not want to sweep his whole team with my Torterra alone. Plus, I wanted some XP. But then I also remembered Team Eclipse took my parents away from me. No love around here. So I threw out my Torterra again to... Never mind. I changed back to Elective Vire. I cannot use Roar and which it forced me to switch out. <laughs> Then he sent out his Vaporeon, which I one shot it with my Electivire. For the 7th gym, this dude, I don't know, he was hard but easy at the same time. He sent out a Honchkrow, I Mega Evolved my Aggron, hoping that I was able to Oko this Honchkrow with one Rock Slide, which did not go as planned. I eventually killed it with the second Rock Slide. His next Pokemon was a Crocodile. He intimidated me, he did quite a lot of damage to me with uh, Outrage. I Giga Drain took him under half. He outraged again, got confused, and I killed him with one more Giga Drain. I one-shotted his Bishart with my Magmortar, and then I was able to get two Fell Stinger off with my Drapion, which puts me at plus six. He sent out his Houndoom, used Shadow Ball, I live with two HP, and one-shotted his Houndoom. Once again, lame ass Tess wants to smoke, so I gave it to her. My Ice Punch one-shotted this Garchomp. She sent out her Salamence, which intimidated me, but I thought since Ice is plus four against Salamence, it will one-shot her, but it did not, which completely surprised me. Besides her Salamence, her whole entire team got one-shotted by my Electivire's Ice Punch. Her last Pokemon was an Arteria. I set out my Aggron. I thought it was going to Mega Evolve into Mega Arteria, which is a Fairy Dragon type, so I used my Heavy Slam, and guess it didn't Mega Evolve. So she got one more blast off and one more heavy slam was enough to take her out. Once I got to Crescent Town, again, Tess little lame man went off by herself to fight off Team Eclipse and guess what? She done got herself arrested. So now I have to go and save her stupid ass. And then for the final battle with Jake, I'm pretty sure you guys already know what's gonna happen. His team order is literally the same as last time he sent out his Zep Striker, his Needle King, his Slow Bro. And then Arcanine, and like usual, his team got cooked. The only thing he added to his team was the Delmice, which was probably the best Pokemon that he's gotten so far. And of course, his last Pokemon, Vaporeon. I don't know why he chose Vaporeon. There were so many other evolutions that he could choose, but he instead chose Vaporeon. Because Tess sorry ass got arrested, I now have to go through this stinky ass swamp just to get to her and my parents to save them. The only reason why I even went through that is because my parents if it was just Tess, I would have just left her. For the final battle against Professor Cypress, I was kind of trolling and I did not switch out my Magmortar. He lived with 1 HP and knocked me out. He sends out a Decidueye and you already know what I have to do. I sent out my Drapion and tried to stack up on my Fell Stinger. But this time, I was actually able to get plus 6 on my Drapion and swept his entire team. Boom! Bada bop boom! So this dude actually stepped up and he got a Mega Charizard X, but POW! Oh! And so it turned out that Jake was just undercover this whole entire time and look at how happy Tess is. And then this box was about to hit her and ooh, I wish it did hit her. But guess what? Jake was game seven LeBron James, came in, pushed her away, took the hit and BAM! He got sent into the portal. And now for the last gym, the ghost gym. I sent out my Drapion trying to sweep the entire gym because I know as long as I get at least one fell stinger off, I'm most likely able to clear the whole entire gym without any problems. But her spirit tomb and her Aegis Slash was just, for some reason, so tanky that I could not one shot them and I just decided to not go with the sweep anymore. Her last Pokemon was a Mega Sableye. I don't know why I switched out, I guess because I was like maybe I won't just I won't do enough damage to the Sableye with my Drapion. So I switched out to my Aggron, Mega Evolved it. And holy cow, that did a lot of damage. I ate that Shadow Ball and one Heavy Slam, knocked it out. And that gave us our 8th Gym Badge. Before I fought the Elite Four, Tess came back and wanted the smoke again. And you guys already know how this went. I just completely cleared her whole entire team. And her Mega Altera just got one-shotted by my Aggro. Now the first Elite Four trainer is Steel-type. He sent out Ferrothorn and I sent out my Magmortar. And one-shotted it with a Flamethrower. 
Next was his AG Slash, and I was actually surprised that he actually tanked one Lava Plume. I guess if I used Flamethrower, he would have died, but I kind of sold that one. Still, I knocked it out. And then this dude sent out a Jirachi, which thankfully his Iron Head did not flinch me because Jirachi has Serene Grace and Iron Head has a 30% chance of flinching. So fortunately, I was able to one-shot it with one Flamethrower. His last Pokemon was a Mega Metagross. He used Bullet Punch, I survived 42 HP, Earthquake, under half. He used Rock Slide, I survived with 2 HP and hit it with one more Earthquake to finish off the fight. The next Elite Four is Jamie Jamie, which he is an Ice Trainer. He sends out a Nine Tails. I one shot it with my Flamethrower. Thank God, because he probably would have used Reflect or uh, Light Screen. But then he did get Snow Warning off, so now he sent out his Zetitan, which has Slush Rush and outspeeds pretty much every Pokemon. But luckily, I survived one hit and one shot the Zetitan. Now this is where things actually got pretty scary because he sent out a Kiram, and I really let him get two Dragon Dances off. And my aggro was just not do dealing the damage. So I sent out my Electivire. He got another Dragon Rage off. One shot of my Electivire. And so my best bet was just to let him get confused by using Outrage. And then just try to do chip damage. And thankfully he hit himself with Confusion twice. Which allowed me to defeat him. His last Pokemon was a Mega Glalie. And I just one shotted it. The next Elite Four trainer was a Fighting Type trainer. And now my first run and his Annihilate literally swept my whole entire team. I somehow sold the fight and let him get three bulk up and then he just, just an annihilated me. But then on this run, his Annihilate got burned by my flame body and I was able to knock out the Annihilate. For the Terrakion, he really did not do anything. It was super easy. Uh, I just did two Earthquakes and knocked it out. He stood no chance against my Torterra. For his last Pokemon, which is a Mega Heracross, I could have one shot it with my Honchkrow or my Magmortar. But then I knew that since it has skill link and for sure it had rock blast, it would one shot both of them. So instead I went for a mega aggro heavy slam, which ended up one shotting it as well. Next is the sidekick elite four member and he sends out a hidden Billy and Didi and god damn he one shot at my Torterra. But then my Drapion came in and got his get back, even though he almost lost his life. At this point I did not know if I was going to win or not because I knew who his last Pokemon is going to be. But then thankfully this Mew came out. And just spam knockoff on my aggron because I guess it detected the Mega Stone. And now for the Mega Alakazam. I decided to not Mega Evolve my aggron and not switch out because Mega Alakazam's ability is Trace. And I'd rather have him Trace Aggron's Rockhead over anything else. Which secured me this battle. And finally for the Champion Battle. And god damn this dude's Pokemon is so broken. So for the final battle you cannot use any items. You cannot heal your Pokemons, and the Champions team is all EV trained, perfect IVs, they have the perfect movesets, and they have all the right PvP items. And they know what move to use. And this is when I found out one thing, my team is super weak to ground types. His Landorus came out, my Electivire used Ice Punch, but he survived with like 30% HP left, and he just cleared my whole team and I had to quit. And then this right here was like my third try. So right here by Drapion was pretty much just a sacrificial lamb and I was just using him to like, you know, get a free switch in. So check this out, okay? My Electivire hit a Ice Punch and then I freeze him. I freeze the Landorus, but then he thought out the first turn and used a mean Earthquake on me. And that's when I knew I had to go back to the drawing boards. And so at this point, I was really thinking about just leveling up all my Pokemon to level 100 or I'm gonna have to hit the BP shop and get some PvP items. I did not know how I was going to beat this champion. And then here was the reason why I literally almost gave up and went to training, right? Look at his team. I did my best to remember what moves his team had. So his first Pokemon was a Glamora. The ability is Toxic Debris. Glamora will set up Toxic Spikes as long as it is hit by a physical move. And guess what? The only moves that I have were physical that were super effective against Glamora. I tried to use my Aggron first with like Surf or uh, Bulldoze. Did not work. Earth Power and Power Gem will one shot every single Pokemon on my team except for Torterra. Mortal Spin will always poison the Pokemon that it hits and this Glamora has a Focus Sash. Rodan Wash, it was not too much of a problem. As long as I kept my Torterra in and Giga Drained, I was fine. 
Now this Landorus. This Landorus is so annoying, okay? My only Pokemon that was able to do some sort of damage to this Landorus is my Electivire. And again, Ice Punch is a 4 times super effective against Landorus. And it does not one-shot him, okay? The only way I could beat this dude is to bring in my Drapion, sacrifice it, take out the toxic spikes that was set by this Glamora, come in with Electivire, hit Ice Punch, hope to freeze this Landorus, and then hit him with one more Ice Punch. And now Heatran, there were ways to beat Heatran. Heatran was not the hard part. He was tanky, but he was not too difficult. Godango, again, not too hard. Super strong special attacker, but it wasn't bad. And then his Salamence, I could not even get to Salamence. And this right here was like the sixth run of this champion battle. And if I lost this one, I was seriously going to literally go and train all my Pokemon to level 100. But check this out, okay? A miracle happened. I won't speed up this whole entire battle, okay? So the Glamora started off with spikes. I used Earthquake. Of course, I leave him with 1 HP because he has a Focus Sash. I activated his Toxic Debris. And I'm like, okay, it's whatever. I'm just use Crunch. He used Mortal Spin. Poisons me. Crunch kills the, uh, Crunch knocks out the Glamora. He sends out Rotom Wash. I just spam Giga Drain. Hydro Pump, he hits his Hydro Pump. I use Giga Drain, again. You will lose if he does not hit his first Hydro Pump. I hit it, I crit, and I one shot him. And then he sent out Lenderis. I swap to my Drapion, take up the spikes. And then take the Intimidate so that my Electrifier doesn't have to take it. And I pretty much just do the damage that I can right now. But I don't know why I decided to go Toxic Spikes. EQ kills me in one hit. And then and then y'all, this is where the Miracle comes in, alright? So I send out my Electrifier. I was very, I, I was like debating if I should send out Aggron. But I was like, alright, screw it. I'm going to send out my Electrifier. I use Ice Punch. My Ice Punch freezes the Landorus, and then again, I was debating what move I should make. Landorus didn't thaw out the first turn, and I knocked out the Landorus. And so now this pretty much just opens up everything for me. This was the winning point of the game. And then now he was going to send out his Heatran, I was like, alright, whatever. You know, my uh, Torterra was, was already low, so might as well just send him out. I sent out my Torterra. I used Earthquake. The Heatran used Magma Storm, he misses the Magma Storm, and my Earthquake one-shots the Heatran. And so I knew that if I could get this Godingo low enough, he was for sure going to use Recover. Hex didn't do the damage, I used Flamethrower. Almost knocked out the D Godingo. He used Recover. And my Lava Plume knocks out the Godango. And finally, this is literally the first time that I saw the Salamence. All of my previous tries, I did not even get close to the Salamence at all. And so like now I'm like, okay, my Magmortar is going to probably die anyway. So I'm just going to use Hyper Beam and do the most damage I can. My Magmortar was a beast. Salamence went Dragon Dance. My Hyper Beam takes the Salamence to half. He uses Facade, knocks me out, and I'm like, okay, hopefully he does not use, like, re like Roost, because I know for sure he has Roost. I use Foul Play, hoping that I could kill him. He used Facade, he didn't go for another Dragon Dance. Had he gone for another Dragon Dance, I would have been, been able to knock him out. So I go for Aggron, I Mega Evolve, and use Stone Edge. Because I know, even with Aerial Late, none of these do damage to me. I resist Flying Type. So I was not even scared. I used the Stone Edge, take him to like 2 HP. And I'm like, alright, whatever, I'm just gonna do Double Edge. But then he used his Double Edge, takes me pretty low, but he also knocks himself out with the Recoil. Which secures me the win. And there it was. I defeated Pokemon Brick Bronze with Paul's team. On paper, Paul's team looked very good. I mean, I have to admit, it is very good. The only time I ever struggled was against the Elite Four. 
especially the champion and other than that like i pretty much just boodles through the whole entire game but all right thank you guys so much for watching this video took so long to make so if you would please hit the like and subscribe button comment down below if you would like to see more runs like this and if you do what team should i go next and i'll see you guys on the next video peace out trust